Hey, what's up? Codeforge here. Welcome in the next video. Today, I would like to show you how to initialize your database using data SQL and schema SQL files on your application startup. We will create the following project, which you can see on the screen. Uh, almost all values are default. I have changed the names and also I have added few dependencies. It will be the H2 database, Spring Web and also Spring Data JPA few more words about this database initialization so let's jump to the spring documentation over here so we can read over here that spring boot will look for the schema sql and data sql files on the class path and if it will find it it will execute the ddl scripts from the schema sql and after that it will execute the dml scripts from the data sql one more remark over here, it is also possible to specify the platform for the schema and data SQL. So you can switch between the database specific scripts. And if we leave it default, so it will be schema.sql and data.sql, it will be executed for each platform. So this was the introduction and some theory. We can go back to the Spring Boot initializer and generate our project. As you can see, I have already generated the project and opened it in the IDE. So now let's navigate to the application properties file in our project. So we go to the DB initialization, sources, main, resources, application properties. Over here, I will paste few properties which we have used across entire JPA series. And if you don't know what's going on over here, I encourage you to check out the video that is dedicated to the H2 configuration. We will get back to this properties file later because we will have to do a few adjustments. But now let's delete the static and templates directory because we will not need them in this video. And let's create schema.sql file. So we right click on the resources directory, we select file and we want to call it schema.sql. Here we can put our DDL script and we'll use it for creating person table. We'll start with giving the name to the table. So we'll say create table and we'll call it person. And now inside we'll specify columns and constraints. Our table of course needs the primary key. So we'll say ID. It is the name of the column and it will be the type of integer. We also want it to be not null and we'll set it to the auto increment. So we say auto underscore increment. Each person will also have first name and the last name. So let's say first name is the name of the column. Also, it will be varchar type and it will be not null. And now we'll copy this line and paste it over here. And we'll change it to the last name. Like this. Let's add one more column. So it will be H column and it will store integer and it will be also not null. Last thing we want to do is to put the primary key constraints. So to do it, we have to say primary key and we have to specify the column for which we want to have the primary key and we want it for the ID. Okay, so our schema.sql file is ready and it should create the table after the application startup. So now let's go back to the application properties. I want to point out one thing and as you can see, I have commented out DDL auto set to create drop and I have replaced it with the DDL auto set to none. And this is because Create drop will remove all the tables and all the data we have created using the schema.sql and data.sql. Okay, so we can start the application and check if the table person will be created. So we go to the Maven and over here from the plugins we want to say Spring Boot Run. 
after a few seconds our application should be up and we'll be able to navigate to the web console of the H2 database. Okay, so here is the web console. We are on the local host port 8080 slash H2. We can connect using our default user and we can see that the person table is here. We can select data from this table, but it will be of course empty. But we can see that the columns are correct. So we have ID, first name, last name, and the last column is H. We can close it up for now and stop the application. And now we'll insert some data. To do it, we have to create a data SQL file in the resources directory. So we right click it, select new file, and we'll call it data.sql. Over here, we can put our DML scripts. So, for example, we can insert some data to the person table. We'll start with insert into person because this is the name of our table. And also, let's make it bigger. And we have following columns there. So, it will be first name, last name and age we don't have to take care of id because it is auto increment and now we have to use the values and provide the values so let's say the first name will be john last name will be doe and age will be 20. now let's copy this line and paste it over here and one more and we'll change the values so this one will be Tom Smith and let's say it will be 32 and also let's change this one to the Jane and it will be also Smith and let's say it will be 30. Now we can rerun our application and check if the data will be inserted into the person table. Here is the web console. We can connect and select data from the person table. And we can see that the data from the data SQL file is here because we have three entries. So those are the three inserts we have created. Okay, so this is how you want to initialize your database during the application startup using only Spring Boot. And this is a very basic way of doing it if you want to use more advanced approach because this one is not enough for you. You can use one of the tools like Liquibase or Flyway and both of them are of course supported by the Spring Boot itself. And in the future, I'm planning to prepare a few videos about the flyway to show you how to initialize the database and how to version it. But now we can go back to our application. I want to show you a few more things. So let's close it and let's stop the application. I don't like that we have this data SQL and schema SQL in the resources. I would like to put it in the dedicated directory. So let's right click on the resources, select new and let's create a new directory and we'll call it DB. Now let's move those files to the new directory. So we will drag it and we will click refactor over here. And now we can see that we have the data SQL and schema SQL in the DB directory. And now if we will start our application, we'll get an error. And this is because Spring Boot is looking for the data SQL and schema SQL in the resources directory and not in the DB directory located in the resources directory. So we have to tell Spring where to look for the data SQL and the schema SQL. And to do it, we have to go to the application properties file. Here at the bottom, we'll add two properties and the first one will be spring.datasource.data and we'll set it to class path colon db slash data.sql. So we are telling Spring that our data SQL is located on the class path in the db directory and 
the file itself is called data sql now we want to do the same for the schema sql so we say spring dot data source dot schema and we want to set it to class path colon db slash schema dot sql we can quickly try it out so let's start the application and in the meantime i will open the web browser here's the web console we can log in select the data from the person table and all the data and the table itself is here great let's close it up and let's test out if we still can add our objects from the code itself we will create a simple person entity so we go to the java our main package and we create a new package called model and inside we'll have new java class which will be called person in the first place of course we have to annotate it with the entity annotation and we will also specify the table name and we'll set it to the person so our table had four fields and the first one was id so we'll say id and we also use generated value annotation with the strategy set to identity and the field itself will be long id we'll also have string field which will store the first name and another one which will be also string and it will store last name our last column is h so we'll say private integer h we'll also generate constructor for the first name last name and the h that's good we also need repositories so we will create a new package we'll call it repository and we'll create the new interface so it will be person repository here we want to mark it with the repository annotation and we want to say extends and it will be crude repository for the person entity which has the primary key type of long and yeah our personal repository has the primary key type of long and here in the schema sql we have used the integer as the id so we have to change to the big int because it is the equivalent to the long type so now we can go to the main of our application and over here we want to access the context in the first place so like we did it all the time we are storing the reference to the configurable application context from the run method and here now we want to retrieve the person repository from the context so we say get bin or the person repository dot class and also let's move it to another line now we can create our person object so we'll say person and we'll use the constructor which we have generated so it will be new person and the first thing is the first name so it will be chris and let's say it will be anderson and the age will be 32 and now using the person repository we can save this person to the database using the save method and passing our person object everything is set up so we can start the application and we'll check if we are still able to add the objects to the database from our code here is the console and we can connect and select the data from the person table and we can see that the Chris Anderson is also added to the table that's great and also let's check the ID and yes it is big integer so it's all good okay guys so this is everything I have prepared for this video I hope you enjoyed this one 
And we have played today a little bit with this data SQL and schema SQL and now we know how to initialize our database. So thank you for watching, remember about liking the video and subscribing to the channel. See you next time.